Obviously, the other day I see I see BMXers talking about looking for places to move down here all the time. Again, like it's happening again now, and I feel like I feel like it's you know it's just going to be a rebirth where everything's just going to happen again. When I started riding, it was Croas, the little ramp here and the track, and they were all like three miles apart. I guess I went there in 93 was the first time for the jam. And then from there we heard that the Sydney Trails was up the road. Yeah, I think the first time I went to the track yeah. was, was for the 95, 94 backyard jam when there was like 5,000 people there. So Dave Plymer flipped the tabletop and then he flipped the chasm. <laughs> and that was like, I wasn't massively familiar with yeah. like the Bexhill racetrack, but it was when I watched like the backyard anthology yeah. videos and things like that. It, you know, I was able to see like where backyard jam came from and like all these crazy pros in town. I'd never, I never got to see the, the famous blue halfpipe. Um, that that got knocked down just before I, I got into BMX, and there, there was just a mini ramp there. So the vert ramp, the yeah. first metal ramp, yeah, that was rad. We, I was a vert skater, so and then we heard that there was a ramp here, but it was always windy when we came here. Like Crowes really did, it, it really kept the scene alive, and you know, mad love to Dennis for holding it down for that many years, man. Like it felt like this, this lost kind of like community that was just involved in this sport that I knew nothing about, and I was just like, oh my, like I know football, and that's it. There was just like these two crazy metal lips, and he was always guaranteed to ride, so. And that was it, I was sold for life. And so that was where we spent our youth just riding to Crowhurst Ramp every day and then and then obviously got to know Dennis. Couldn't have been a nicer guy and he really put himself out to make sure everyone had something to ride all the time. Like every time you go there, he was in the digger moving stuff around, like making more jumps and stuff. It's like, sit down, dude. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I loved it. I really, you know, yeah, I can't, I can't find Dennis enough for that. It's amazing. So I'd been riding a couple of months and I'd never. I didn't really even know that BMX competitions existed. And one day a friend of mine said, oh, do you want to come to the Backyard Jam? And I uh, got there and I was just blown away. I'd never seen that many people in one area, let alone to crowd around one tiny little dirt jump and watch American pros do their thing. And Literally just killing themselves, purely just to make it over it. There'd always be, you know, someone crazy sending stuff over it. There's like clips of Mozzie going over it. Like that was like, for me, my first experience with seeing BMX in, in and around the Hastings area. Really, really quickly, I, re I realized that there wasn't many contests going on in anywhere else in the world. Like Hastings was like where stuff was happening. It was, we didn't know how big it was or until now. Like looking back, it was like, yeah, it, it was like the X Games of its day. I stumbled upon it in, in, in the middle of the country lanes, but it led to all these places, like these huge events, and then, and then and Matt Hoffman coming over, and all these pros, and really quickly I learned that like, I, I was born into like, the best BMX scene in the world at the time. Third place, which claims himself a goodie bag from backyard, is Bass Keith. When you won it, and I was like a kid looking at you, I was like, oh my God, that must be like insane. But then obviously when I won it, it was like, it was good, but it been a, there'd, been a, yeah, there'd been a long build up to that. So it wasn't yeah. as like, I'm not, I'm not saying it was shit, but it was like, yeah, it was way better to see someone else win. Than, no, it wasn't, I'm talking shit now. <laughs> Boy, there was like the backyard shop back in the day, it was on the seafront. Then that obviously went to 70s, like it turned into a big distro. And with that came, a swarm of you know international pro riders that continuously visited Hastings. Even then, with everyone moving here and stuff, it was all because we were just here and this is what we did. We just rode. Like I got to see the Hastings Backyard Jam in 2002 because it was my it was my birthday. On the Sunday it was finals. For me to see that as like a young kid, I was like, oh my god, this is this is where I want to be. Like BMX is so sick. Then obviously after that, like the scene it quietened down as far as contests go. That sort of like you know, being the last sort of big contest in Hastings, you know, there was that still that little flame, like from when from there, it was like the boiler jam. I always kept like people coming back to Hastings at least once a year, you know. It was backyard, was a shop, then they became 70s. But then when they became that, there wasn't a shop as such. And then obviously, and then, and then the source started in Bex Hill. I remember first going there and I was like, wow, a BMX shop. They've done the same sort of thing as they backyard did back in the day. It's just grown and grown and grown. And so now they've, had great success and 
they're very ambitious and that's where, where we, we are now with the, with the amazing source part. You can date it back to so long that BMX has always been like a massive, massive scene in Hastings and with the Source Park opening this year leading up to the Battle of Hastings, like this is the next chapter in BMX in Hastings. So now they're gonna they're going for it. We can have the big contest that we want. Get everyone back in. Fly every, like everyone's coming in for it. It's gonna be awesome.